Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. I apologize about the slight delay on the video. So today I want to go ahead and talk about the progression of the Infernal Blow character that I have. Uh, he's level 79 right now and I've also leveled the Berserker a little bit. I'll go into him after this character. So uh, first thing before I start a map, I do want to state that I know I'm supposed to be using an axe, but I got a Terminus S drop and Terminus S is way better than any axe I'm going to be using until I get a decently crafted Vol Axe, I think, or even just average crafted. Uh, I have been doing a bit of respecking on the tree. I'm going to link the new path of building a little bit later. Basically, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up pathing this backside here. This backside is going to give us access to uh, these axe nodes. Um, I'm also going to most likely respec Wrecking Ball and Rampart and just gut this here. Um, and that way we have access to, like, for example, Utma or Utmost Might, which is pretty decent damage, but mainly it also gives, it's like a hybrid between life and damage. Uh, Juggernaut, uh, Two Point Jewel, Barbarism, which puts us to 77 Fire Res. Um, and then I'm probably going to strip down this pathing here that you see, these two points, connect back through here. Um, mainly because of this leech cluster. One really big fuck up that happened is in Path of Building. If you guys had the most recently updated one at the time when I theory crafted, this node, Gladiator's Perseverance, actually said attack damage leeched his life. They then did a quick hotfix and changed this to physical, which means the only source of attack leech in the game that we can use for elemental builds is here on the tree and here on the tree and anywhere we can get Fire Leech, which is not really available to us, which kind of sucks, but I mean, that's just how it's got to be. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's get going. So I'm running currently uh, Herald of Ash, a stone which gives that blind aura, and then I'm running Warlord's Blasphemy at the moment. Here's a nice tier 4 map uh, that we've got. I'm currently running Infernal Blow, Ellie Damage with Attacks, Ancestral Call, Added Fire, and Ellie Focus. I do have Pulverize. Uh, I, I do swap Pulverize out with Added Fire sometimes. Added Fire is much more single target because it doesn't have that attack speed reduction on you. Um, however, Pulverize feels a bit better for clear, but at the same time it makes you hit slower. So I'll tell you what, I'll put it in Pulverize for the video so you guys can see. Um, let's do this fields. It's just a tier 4 we've got. Nothing really too crazy on it. Less recovery. I normally would use Blood Rage, but I've got Terminus S, which gives us Frenzy Charges on crit. And my flasks are completely awful right now. I don't have anything set up properly. See, I don't really feel like I need uh, Pulverize for this map, because there's like not enough density. Let me, let me actually drop the Pulverize. I'd probably say the Pulverize is better for, like, beyond maps, maybe. Did I miss it back here? Okay.
And I will show you the single target with Ancestral Call in. So you guys can see. That's his like kind of invon phase or reduction and then that pop should kill him. There we go. Why don't I need melee splash? Because you scale weapon range and then you use ancestral call and you don't need melee splash. Which you don't even actually have to use ancestral call. The reason why I like ancestral call is because it just pretty much ensures that when you attack you always hit something. Whereas, even without the weapon range, you don't always hit something. It's also really nice to use Ancestral Call because you can kind of kite. Like, if you see this guy, I can, like... It's, like, not doing it very... There we go. I can, like, sort of stay back and hit him. Like, this pack, right? I can go like this. So it's good for, like, those spooky mobs. Alright, so that's pretty much the character right now. So, goals are definitely... Um, I, I would say to make this build feel a lot better, This the first thing I need to do is farm Betrayal to get one minus mana cost. Uh, the reason why I want one minus mana cost skill is because my Infernal Blow only costs 18. If I get, like, minus 5, you know, that puts it to, what, like, 13? That's, like, a pretty big difference. Uh, definitely going to be respecting this bottom side probably won't respect this until I get a good axe to path up this top way. Um, and then I don't know when I'm going to need Vitality Void. This might be for pushing like later in yellow tier maps slash red tier maps. Uh, one thing that feels nice is I, or I, that's going to be nice is I know I'm dropping Wrecking Ball, which is a lot of attack speed. Thankfully, uh, Harvester of Foes does give 15% attack speed while leeching and we're always going to be using mana. So we're always going to be leeching with Harvester. So that's a nice attack speed buff. And then I know Rampart gives a lot of attack speed, but thankfully we get the attack speed back at Slaughter, and then I don't need to run an Onslaught Flask anymore, uh, which allows for more defensive utility flasks, so I'm really happy for that. Uh, definitely want to drop this other Life Flask. The reason why I haven't dropped this Life Flask yet is because I really want Juggernaut first for the extra life recovery. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much this character, just to go over my gear really fast to show you what we're using. Trying to start getting elemental damage with attacks on pretty much everything, but I just haven't really played as much. Um, so that's kind of what today is for. And then I've got two jewels in. The reason why I've got this jewel is because I'm getting ready to connect through here and then respect this part. And like I said, start working back on this side. Um, for Uber Lab, it's looking like we are most likely. I don't know, Uber Lab is still kind of up, up and down. I still kind of want Overwhelm because of the minus crit multi and base crit chance. This will be really good. But I don't know, I kind of almost want to get the Endless Hunger now for some leech. But I don't know, it's hard. It's just hard to say. I, I won't really know until I play the character further to see like really what I, what I feel like I need. Um, with that being said though, let me go to the Berserker and give you guys some updates on this character. I know I got a lot of angry YouTube comments saying <clears throat> the following. Excuse me, Mr. Pox Kappa, why would you post a build like this? I tried playing with my friends in a five-man team, and it took me 11 kills to kill a white mob. Well, I'm here to let you know that I, I thought it was a little bit basic knowledge that if you play a Marauder and you're specking life, 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 and then nothing for a little while, that you're not going to do the most damage right away unless you're playing melee or you're using some leveling gear. Uh, but to show you that it's really not that difficult to do damage with the Bozerker, all you need to do is grab your 100% chance to Impale, which you get Forceful Skewering plus this and Dread Banner, um, and the character feels pretty good. The pathing looks weird, but that's because we need to stretch our character out because we don't want to grab crit until... We, we don't really want to grab crit until later. Like, I'm 66. I think I grab crit around 60. Um, but yeah, let me remove, like, here. I've got Faster Attacks, Brutality... Name, Impale, Reign of Arrows, Mirage Archer. I'm going to remove Mirage Archer, so this is just a 5 link. Um, this is a bow that I crafted. I've been crafting all of my bows as I go through the character. Uh, basically, either Quad Whetstone and then Alkit, or you can do the uh, recipe with a Rare Rustic Sash, where you have a Rare Rustic Sash and a Whetstone. You sell it with this vendor, and it will give you a percentage physical damage increase. Then you can Augment and Regal. Um, other than that, nothing really too crazy. Rip Lucky. There's also a recipe to craft a Hiri's, Hiri's Bite, is it? 
Uh, this is a recipe that you can craft if you look up on the wiki. You need a 1% uh, gem cutters, sorry, you need a 1% rain of arrows with a chance orb with a shark tooth quiver. Um, and I think that might be it. If you look at the wiki, it will 100% tell you. Crafting this at the beginning is nice because it gives you that dex requirement that you need. It gives you the int requirement, which helps with the Herald of Purity. It also gives you flat cold, which helps a lot. And then you've got the attack speed increase. Why Reign of Arrows instead of Scourge Arrow? Because I don't like the idea of playing a full physical build and using a conversion spell, even if it's better. Maybe if I get fed up or something, I'll play it, but... This doesn't feel right to me. Pretty big spooker over there, man. What are my boots? These are 30%. Yeah. Whoa! That was perforate, right? Like, range perforate? These guys are very mean. I tried tornado shot. I didn't really like it, so I respect it. felt better for clear and for single target it also felt better because of all rain of arrows without all rain of arrows the other one felt better but then again i also get access to point blank when i use rain of arrows So this guy has been pretty decent, like I said, um, to kind of show you our pathing and what we've been doing. You can sort of see. Um, I've got 4k life right now with Acrobatics and Soul of Steel. Uh, the one thing I like about this character opposed to the other character is due to the fact that we're in a full physical meta, uh, I've got access to like Vitality Void and even though Gladiator's Perseverance is like meant for melee, it's still really good and it's still something that I can use and you still get attack damage while leeching uh, which is really nice I can even grab martial expertise which is total recovery per second from life leech um, so that's the one thing I really like about this character we also get to make use of a lot of the new nodes like fleet foot uh, long shot I don't know if I need long shot with rain of arrows anymore because I, I, I'm confused exactly how the interaction works again um, and then I get like Dazzling Strikes, which is going to be my next one. Um, and then if you're playing Tornado Shot, you just come up here and you grab these Pierce Notes. Like I said, I tried it early game. It didn't feel very good. It also felt like I was going oom much quicker with Tornado Shot. So I decided to stick with Rain of Arrows. Uh, and Rain of Arrows has honestly felt really good for me ever since. Um, to come back over here, one other thing to talk about is what I'm doing with the... Um, Auras, I've got Precision. Precision gives us a huge flat accuracy buff and gives us the increased critical strike chance. If you can't run Precision, remember it's a flat aura. You can simply lower like lower the level. You don't have to run a max Precision. 
Precision puts us to 95% accuracy right now, but we've got accuracy nodes to grab. I'm also running Dread Banner, which puts us at, if you look here, 100% uh, Impale chance. Where's Impale? Where's Impale? There. Chance to Impale 100%. Um, the reason why the damage seems a bit streaky on the character is because we're using a 5% base crit bow on a crit build, so I don't really have much crit yet. And to make it even more streaky at the moment, um, if you are aware of how our ascendancy works, Flawless Savagery gives us crit multi and 20 to 30 fizz if you've crit recently. So if I don't crit recently, I don't get the big buff. So that's kind of what we're aiming towards. And that's, you know, that's going to be crafting a Harbinger bow. Obviously, we're not going to be using a Thicket bow the whole time. This is just what I've got right now for the character. Um, to make the character feel good while you're leveling, because I know tips for the beginner players, you need to get attack speed as much as possible. Um, so what I did is the first thing I did for pathing is I basically, if you if you even want to skip this, you can. You can just come straight down if you really want to. But anyway, you're going to come to here, grab your sip, your swift skewering, and then it's either, either you go for forceful skewering for the extra impale, definitely grab... Oopsies. Definitely grab this node because you need the impale chance until you get your dread banner. Uh, come across, and I went straight for Art of the Gladiator for the uh, extra 12% attack speed. After I got Art of the Gladiator, I went for Forceful Skewering. After Forceful Skewering, I went over immediately, and instead of pathing this way to point blank, I went up and I grabbed Farsight. It's really up to you what you want to do. Like I said, I was trying to Tornado Shot out, which is why I took the top pathing. Um, then I came across here. I grabbed long shot. Uh, I didn't grab fleet foot till after. Naturally, you do not go crit until you actually have a reason to go crit because you don't need the damage. Um, then I moved up, and I mean, I was carrying someone with two player HP the entire time playing this character. Literally had no issues at all, especially because the bigger the boss is, the more targets you can hit with rain of arrows. Um, you can also try using conch effect. I, I was leveling, am I still leveling conch effect? Here it is. I was trying up Conk Effect. I didn't really feel like it was necessary, so I didn't use it. So, like I said, I've got Faster Attacks, Brutality, Maim, Impale, Reign of Arrows. That was in a 5 link with this budget Rune Knock Thicket Bow. Anyway, though, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, or drop any questions down below. I've been getting a bit hammered with the questions on the stream, so make sure you guys are watching the videos. It really does mean a lot to me and helps me a lot with my sanity. So, catch you guys later. Hope you guys are enjoying the PoE expansion, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everyone.